All right, here we go with 10.2. This is a simple exercise. It's kind of a skill-based lesson about the method of common basis. So our objective today is that students will be able to solve equations by finding the common basis. Now, what the heck is this? Now, solving exponential equation that is ones that has the variables that we just talked about is important in algebraic skill to gain proficiency within this course, Algebra 2. There are two primary ways of solving an equation. First of all, we will work with this lesson called a method of common basis. But again, this is an introduction. So, 2 to the x is equal to 16. Notice this is in the exponent section, the x. That's what I'm trying to solve. So the, the trick or the work kind of around this is to make both of these have the same exact base. So in this case, my base is equal to 2. And I say, so I'm going to have 2 to the x. How is it that I can make the 16 have a base of 2? So 2 to what power is going to give me 16? Excellent, 2 to the 4th power because 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 times 2. This becomes 8 times 2 which is 16 which is actually what I wanted up there. Now that I have the same base, this is where it gets super easy is I drop the base so the 2 and the 2 is gone. And then I take my exponent and I solve it. So in this case, I don't need to do anything. Not 6, the same rule. Uh, 4. Oops. Not 6, but 4. So this becomes x is equal to 4. Just drop the base and I keep my exponent. My exponent is x and here is 4. Let's try another one really quick. My base is 3, so I know it's going to be 3 to the x is equal to 3 to what power give me 27? That's 3. Drop my bases, and I'm left with x is equal to 3, which is my final answer. Now here, 5x, my base is 5, so 5 to what power is going to give me 5 to, is going to give me 1 over 25. This is actually negative 2. So 5 squared is going to give me 25, but I actually want 1 over 25. So all I'm going to do is take that exponent and make it negative. Drop the 5s, and you have x is equal to negative 2, which is exactly what I am looking for. Now, here is when it gets a little tricky. 16 is my base. 16 to the x power and I want to make this something that has to do with 16 now 4 is actually the square root of 16 and then the square root of 16 is the same thing as me writing 16 x is equal to 16 to 1 half drop the 16 x is equal to 1 half so the first key part is that I need to make sure I know what my base is and I'm gonna write this here really big what is my base and that's what you're gonna try to make the same throughout now in each of these cases even the last one more challenging one we can manipulate the right hand side of the equation so that they have a common base now with the left hand we can exploit the fact that manipulating the sides to have common base, but first we need to re rem remember this exponent law. Now, what is this law when I'm multiplying and I'm distributing? Remember, when there's a parenthesis, all that means is multiplication. So in this case, it's going to end up being 2, 3 times x, which is actually 2 3 to the x. I just that's the that's the rule we need to remember. This case it's going to be 3 2 times 4x which is actually 3 a to the x. So the rule is when you have these exponents this becomes a multiplication. Now here what do I have? I have 5 negative 1 
times, and I'm going to keep this in parentheses. Why? Because there's two terms. And then what I want to do is distribute this over. So I have 5 to the negative 3x plus 7. This is what I want to keep as my answer. Then again, 4, negative 3, parentheses 1 minus x squared. Go ahead now, distribute this. Keep the 4, negative 3 plus 3x squared. And this is my final answer. So the rule, and I'll just make it here, if you have, I don't know, let's say a to the x power, and then there is some y outside, it's always going to be a and x times y. Whatever those exponents are, we're going to go ahead and multiply them. Now, let's see how we can work with this. Now, it says, solve each of the following by finding the common base of each side. Now, here is where we have to think. 8 and 32. How can I make that have something in common? So, 8 and 32. I want to see what I know. 2 to the what gives you 8? 2 to the third, correct, gives you 8, and I'm going to put the x, and then 2 to the fifth gives me 32. Okay, so again, 8 and 32, I can make that common base a 2. Now then, this ends up becoming what? This ends up becoming 2, 3x is equal to 2 to the fifth. Now what did we say? Just like we dropped the 2's, I have 3x is equal to 5. How do I get x by itself? Divide both sides by 3. x is equal to 5 over 3. So the only issue with this question versus these here, I'm given the base. I know what the base is. Now here I need to figure out what the base is going to be. Now. 9 and 27, I know this is, can be 3. I know 3 square, and you have to keep that in parentheses because I'm changing the 9 to 3 times 3, which is 9, 3 square. And then the exponent that's given, that stays outside, and I know 27 is 3, 3. Now, I need to distribute just like how we did. Remember the rule, what we set up here? The rule is I multiply the exponent. So I will have 3... 4x plus 2 is equal to 3 to the third. Drop the bases, and let's come down here. I have 4x plus 2 is equal to 3. And then this becomes a two-step equation. 4x is equal to 1. x is equal to 1 over 4. Bam, that's my answer. Now the last one, 125x, and then I have this thing over here. I know this can go in terms of 5s. So this goes 5 to the third, and because I'm just changing 25, I'm keeping that x, and then this becomes 5 to the negative 2, and then I'm going to keep my 4 minus x. So let's simplify this 5, 3x, and 5, negative 8, plus 2x. Distribute this over. So I might drop my 5. I'm left with 3x is equal to minus 8 plus 2x, minus 2x on both sides, x is equal to negative 8. That's my final answer. Let's go ahead and exercise 4. This is how it comes on the Regents exam. It says, which of the following represents a solution set of, and I'll take, let's just get some space here. Alrighty. Which of the following is a solution set to 2x squared minus 2 equals 64? So I know this is actually going to stay the same. That's my base. 2 to the what power is going to give you 64? Perfect. This becomes 6. Then what do I do? Drop my base x squared minus 3 is equal to 6. 
add 3 on both sides, x squared is equal to 9. How do you get rid of a square? By taking the square root. That's cancel. x is equal to plus or minus 3. Remember, when you take a square root, it becomes a plus or minus 3. In this case, my answer is choice number 1. That's it. 5. Really quick, let's solve this and check your solution. Actually, what I want you to do is you go ahead, pause the video, and check, do number 5, and let's, know, let's compare and see if we get the same answer. All right? Go ahead. All right, now that you had a chance to try it by yourself, you should have gotten two answer. Yep, that's possible. X is equal to 1 half, or X is equal to positive 6. Now go ahead and look through those problem, this question. Remember, this is special because A is greater than 1. We need to replace the middle term. Go ahead, factor, and then use your zero product property and solve. Now, we have two more examples to go. Solve the following equation of values of theta on this interval. Well, we all know theta from algebra 1, so let's go ahead and do the same exact thing. 3 squared, make it the same, cosine of theta is equal to 3 to the first power. This becomes 3, 2 cosine of theta is equal to 3 to the first power. Now let's go ahead, as always, base are the same, drop that. I have 2 cosine of theta is equal to 1. I can do cosine of theta is equal to 1 half by dividing by 2. Now this, remember this from, uh, let's see, algebra 1. How do you get rid of cosine? You do the inverse. So then you have theta is equal to cosine and inverse of 1 half. Cosine invoice inverse of 1 half on the calculator, you get theta is equal to 60 degrees. Now, our solutions are going to be, think of if you have a quadrant. This is a 360. You know that it's going to be somewhere, cosine is going to be somewhere in quadrant 1. A 60 degrees should be somewhere that looks like this. Maybe that's a little too much. And then I want to know it can be 60 degrees going down as well. So it will be in quadrant 1 and 4. But how do we know what's this going down? If the entire thing is 360, my other option would be theta can also be 360 minus that 60 because I'm going down. And we're going to learn more about this in our next units. So what I wanted you to be able to do is get up to that point and say check, okay? And then our final example for today is going to be find the solution to the following problem. So how can I change this up? I know 6 squared actually is 36, and then 6 to the third power. This is 6, 2 radical x is equal to 6 radical 3. Drop my base. I'm left with 2 radical x is equal to 3. Divide this by 2. Radical x is equal to 3 over 2. And I'm going to just come right here. Radical x is equal to 3 over 2. Now remember, how do you get rid of a square root? And I'll put this in a green. You take the square. Remember that? This and this cancel. You're left with x is equal to 3 over 2 squared, which is actually 9 over 4. So x is equal to 9 over 4 is your final answer. All right, that's it for common basis. This is a simple skill that you can learn. Um, sometimes it's a short response on the regions. Sometimes it is a multiple choice. Go ahead and do those problems. Good luck.